These are the tools that I use on a weekly basis to take care of my reef and keep everything alive and healthy. Let me just get right into it. First of all, I have a tray that's usually sealed, you know, the covered lid, to keep all my metal tools safe. I have cutters in there, dental tools, tongs. I'll show you more about those in a minute. When it comes to plumbing, I always use silicone grease, which you can find at Home Depot or Lowe's, and Teflon tape. I like to have small buckets handy for when I have to clean something instead of a big giant bucket. And I use a single sponge of a separate color from the rest of my household. So that way I don't mix it up when I'm washing dishes or something. I know this is my reef sponge. Uh, I can use the larger bucket to clean something like the Vortec pump. So I'll take the clean one and install it and put the dirty one in vinegar and let it soak overnight so it's easy to clean. When I have to mix up some baked baking soda, which I keep right here, this has been baked in the oven for about an hour at 300 degrees to get the CO2 out. This helps me buffer up pH if it gets down too low too quickly. I'll add it to RO water and stir this for about a solid minute, plastic spoon, plastic cup, and then I'll pour it into this cup that sits in my baffles. There's a tiny hole right here that'll let it trickle out very slowly into the sump instead of having to stand there and pour it in gradually. Another tool that I use every single day is a feeding clip, and this is how I feed my fish. And it's from Two Little Fishies, the Mega Veggie Clip, or Veggie Mag and it holds on magnetically, you can see Spock is ready. And next to it here is my cleaning magnet that I use to clean the glass, which is designed for three quarter inch thick glass. Occasionally, I will break out the Easy Blade, which is a piece that glues straight onto a mag float. And I use a razor blade that's designed specifically for it, but I really don't like to use metal on my aquarium. So, for example, here's a blade, came out of a 10 pack that I got at the fish store. You just pull them out, they're double edged. So the first time I use it, I use the side where the words are readable. And then when I'm done, I rinse it off in the sink, I apply some vegetable oil, and I put it away in some paper towel until next time. And then I know to use the opposite side that has the words upside down to use it again. And it just secures inside this clip. You lower it inside your tank and it'll take off coralline, it'll take off stubborn algae that's holding on tightly, and get into those corners. Like I said, I only use it occasionally because I don't want to take a chance of scratching my glass. I'm really, really careful with razor blades, and I really prefer that you instead use a credit card or a hotel key card to clean the area between the sand, to scrape the glass, to scrape the overflow panel behind me. Um, anywhere where there's something needs to be cleaned off, I use plastic if I can. But here's the easy blade ready to go. This will be on the outside, this will be on the inside, and it will just slice it right off. And even when you turn the corners, be really careful around the silicone. I use TDS meters all the time. This is a handheld, and then this is a dual TDS meter that's installed on my RO unit. I just wanted to show you what it looked like. It shows me the water before the DI stage as well as the water after the DI stage, and I'm always checking on the water quality that's going into my top-off container under the reef. I go through lots of towels. I must have 15 towels that end up getting used, thrown in the washing machine for the next run. I have a couple of different tongs that I like to use. These are great for reaching down into the reef to take out things that are dead, uh, to move a coral slightly to the side, to pluck up bubble algae. This is another one that will get in there nicely because of the curved tong. Not so good with things like Ectasia or Mahanos, but that's another topic. Hydrogen peroxide can be used to clean off algae off of a rock. It can be used to treat the tank if there's dinoflagellates and I just tend to use it sporadically. Something else that I use when I'm securing corals in my tank, I'll use the Ecotech glue, CG, coral glue. This is my bigger bottle. The label came off. Had it for like a year and a half. I keep it in the refrigerator, and every time I need to use it, I unscrew the top, and I'm able to squeeze out glue. It just does not go bad. Very impressive. And then when I need putty, I love the DMD Aquascape putty, which I've done a review about as well on my websites. And it mixes up into a purple color so it doesn't stand out against your rock work too badly. When I'm refilling a reactor, this is just a simple funnel that is used for, uh, I think, jelly, when people are canning their own fruit. And this works out really nicely to put in a reactor and pour carbon or bio pellets, and it's lasted forever. I also have a pointer stick. 
which can be used specifically to show someone something in the tank, you know, like literally point down at it. Or, for example, if their snails have flipped over, I can reach down and flip it right or push some corals apart. And if this isn't long enough, I have, of course, a bigger one in the back room. And then I have a Kent scraper that can also be used, handle first to move something or possibly to push something or move some sand over. Another thing I haven't mentioned that I love to use is muriatic acid. Uh, if you don't want to use acid, you can use white vinegar. That works as well. But the acid's so much faster. And basically, what it, if you take something that's covered in coralline, for example, like let's say the strainer basket of this Vortec pump, you can soak this in the acid water, and then what will happen is the calcium will start dissolving instantly, and you'll see it bubbling. Just like peroxide bubbles on your skin when you have a wound, and the calcium is dissolving. And within 20 minutes, the bubbling will stop, and then you'll know that it's ready to take out rinse and start cleaning off. And you can brush it down. If it's still not clean enough, you can put it back in because you've revealed the next layer down and it'll bubble some more until you finally get all of it off. Here is one of my covers. This is a, a kind of a pointier one. I've seen others that look more like a spade, but this will get down into the rock work and let you nip things out, like pest anemones. Uh, it lets me also trim out coral branches if I need to, to remove a frag. When I clean the glass, I have glass cleaner. This one is from Fritz. I've used another brand as well, and I use it simply with a newspaper. And all I have to do is apply it to the glass, Sprinkle up some paper, like you would imagine, and clean the glass clean. The ink in the ink, um, the ink of the paper will go ahead and polish the glass and give you that nice shine without any of the lint. Also below me here is a step ladder. You gotta have a step ladder when you're working around your tank. And we're doing this demonstration off of my walk board that I usually walk on top of when I'm working in my reef. And I have a different video here in my channel that you can watch. I have a glass thermometer, which is super handy to double check things, whether you're checking water outside of the tank, um, or if you're checking water in the tank and you're doubting the thermometer from your controller, it's great to have a backup. So I try to keep one or two of these in my bin, and I try to keep them in the same place where I can find them, because I lose them all the time. They're about $3 each, and you really can't have too many of them. Then I have all my test kits. I use Salifert for phosphate. I use Elos for alkalinity, for calcium, and for magnesium. And then I use this digital refractometer that tells me the salinity of my tank in both specific gra gravity as well as in um, parts per trillion PPT. Super easy to use, calibrates every single time on the first run before you start using it to make sure it's at zero, and then you put your salt on there, your salt water on there, and it measures it right here on this lens. There's a review on Reef Addicts that you can watch that talks about that. I like specific types of plungers. This one here is used for the ELOS test kits and it slides very easily. There's some other ones on the market that are harder to use, so I tend to hoard the good ones. Um, and when I'm done doing tests, I keep them inside this little tray that has some egg crate in the bottom, so that as they are drying, they can dry into the bottom of the tray. And now when I'm all done, I just put the lid on top and I put this on the shelf and it stays dust free for next time. As you can tell, I have lots of test tubes because you never have too many. I also test nitrate with just the simple API test kit. <clears throat> when I have to melt fish food for the night, I have these little tiny bowls that I use. These are super handy for other projects as well, like picking algae out of my frag tank. All I have to do is have this little bowl, I put in the fish food and let it thaw out with some tank water. And then using a small pipette, I can go ahead and squeeze it out and target feed the, straight to the uh, clownfish in the anemone cube. I can use the tongs to feed krill to my eels. And like I said, when I'm pulling out algae out of the tank, I can go ahead and I can use this to take out bubble algae and put it in this bowl when I'm working in the frag system. Uh, if I need something bigger, of course, I have cups, I have buckets, but this is super small and easy to hold on to while I'm working. A small toothbrush is very practical when you're trying to clean the various things, like I was talking about the Vortec pump. As you're cleaning it, you'll be wanting to brush inside these different areas and really get it clean after it's been soaking. And if that brush doesn't work, I have all kinds of other pipe brushes as well. I also have a turkey baster for blowing things off. But in a tank this size, I prefer to plug in a power head with a long extension cord and just pretty much start blowing things off the rock work if it's really that bad. <clears throat> Another tool that I use all the time is looking at my apex to see what the pH of the tank is and what the tank temperature is. Those are my two numbers I really care about the most. The rest of the time I can tell what's happening with the reef based on the lighting, the time of day, if there's an alert going off. I will get text from the apex if there's a problem. 
and it'll even tell me if my skimmer has over, overflowed to the point that my waste collector is filled to the top. So that is pretty much it. Uh, the last thing I want to show you, I of course keep two flashlights handy. This is just a regular white one, and it is used just to look in the reef and to look under the reef when I'm working, and it uses LEDs, so it lasts forever. With a few double, uh, did I say that? A few D batteries, it'll last for like a year or two. <laughs> and then the Orfeg flashlight, which is the blue light that makes things really glow when you look at them, is super handy to look at corals at night and to see how beautiful your corals can look. So these are my tools. I hope you found this interesting. And if you enjoy this channel, please subscribe. And I will see you next Thursday with another video. Thank you for your time.